think it's the beginning of the year. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, we'll be discussing chapter 11 of the book, which is about uh, the layers. Because when working with uh, I think it was very quiet again. Are you off me? Okay, looking at, I say, the, for the today's discussion, we'll be looking at chapter 11. I hope yeah. I am audible to all. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you now, but every you know, it goes quiet when the microphone comes away from your mouth. Yes. I'm not using my headset today. I will not use this headpiece. So we'll be looking at chapter 11, which is about our layers. And for the uh, learning objective, we are going to learn about uh, the layer uh, from our graphics. Because if you have been working with uh, ggplot 2 let them know that um, this digital is built into several layers. So we are starting from building uh, visualization with digital So we start from the ground up, that is from the ground up average. And from the ground then we start from data, from data, we are going to go into area where we talk about this physics, talk about uh, geometry. So those are, uh, the different layers, I think in all, we have around eight layers uh, in teaching plot two that will be covering, but for this today's discussion, we're looking at those seven layers of the package. So for the prerequisite for, for this chapter, we are using uh, the Dadiverse uh, package. So uh, that is why we have to load the library, Dadiverse, and if you load uh, the library, Dadiverse, we are going to access to the eight core packages that are in the tidyverse. But looking at this package, uh, the recent development version of the tidyverse, if you are using the development version, you are going to have uh, access uh, to the packages because the net has been added to the one of the core packages in tidyverse, but it's not in the it's not in the stable version that is on ground. But if you are working with the uh, yeah. Uh, uh, only I think your mic is on a little bit. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, the tiny bit. So that is not for this. Okay, so looking at uh, the tiny bit, uh, looking at uh, the layer grammar, software device is on. I think for local layer, your mic is on. I think you need to put your mic. And also, team, and also help. So looking at uh, this uh, intro, uh, first of all, we need to, after loading the library digital 2, we need to pass in our data sets that we want to use in creating our, our visualization. And there is a core principle in this, is that the data set in which we are trying to use uh, uh, Can you hear me well, or should I? Is it okay now? The mic, the audio. The audio, it's 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 not good. It is, occasionally I can hear, but a lot of the time, I can't hear much at all. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Be okay now. It was my mic was low, I think. Is it okay yeah. now? Um, it's it's not brilliant, to be honest. I mean, I, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? That's, that's much better. 
Okay, it was my mic from the system, the volume. So I did not know my volume was as low. I think I raised the volume a bit. I think it is okay now. I say first I think when we are working with this is that we need to we need to pass in our data set to the ggplot functions. And this data set in which we are trying to use in creating a visualization, uh, it, it has to be in a, a tidy format because if you are low, ggplot2, if you are working with this package, uh, it works very well with the tidy data whereby each column is a variable, each row is an observation, each cell give you a unique value. So you have to have a tidy data before uh, you can create any type of visualization uh, using ggplot2. So the next uh, layers where we'll be looking at uh, in the package is about the aesthetics. And in this aesthetics, it simply means that we are trying to link uh, variables that are in the data, variables that we have in our data, that is our data already, as I said, is a tidy data. We are trying to link variable in the data to what the visual uh, properties of the job. That is what we can see. So maybe we have one specific column in our data. Maybe we call that column. Maybe we can say this column is named X. We say map this X variable to the X axis. We have another column where we call it Y. I can say map, map this column Y to the Y axis. Then I have another variable. I can say, okay, color it by this specific variable. I can also say, let the shape by this specific variable. So that is what uh, the aesthetic is all about. So everything in which, and in ggplot2, this aesthetic mapping, we always specify it with the AES function. So when we say the AES function, within our parentheses, we are going to say, let x be this, let y be this, let the color be this, let field be this. All these are variables that we can find within this tidy data. But any variable in which we cannot find within this data, if we try to map it to aesthetics, ggplot2 will go back to the data and check into the data. Ah, I have this value that I can't find in our data frame. So it's going to treat it in a different way, but we are going to see all those examples at the course of demonstration today. So like uh, the geometries here, it simply refers to what is the type of uh, visualization in which we are trying to create. That is the visual element used for our data. Because if you want to create a scatter plot, we know the geometry is going to be jump point. If you want to create a bar plot, we can either use a jump call or a jump bar. Then we also have another layer here, which is called uh, the facets. Uh, the, the facets is very useful because we can use it in creating small multiples of a plot because it's very important because facet help us to overcome problem of what we call overplotting because we can split our plot into the small multiples based on specific variables in which we can find uh, in which we can find in our in our data sets in which we are using to create our our visualization. We, we also have, uh, and these facets, they are grouped into two. We have the facet wrap, and we also have the, the facet grid. We'll see more on, on that when we are doing the actual demo. So we also have uh, the statistics. Just as I said earlier, if we are using any GEOM, each GEOM, they always have a default statistics that is specific to a specific job because if you are using job job bar we know that the default statistics for that geometry is going to be start counts then if we are using job call we know that the default statistics is start identity so each job in in ggplot2 they have they always have the default statistics so like the coordinates simply referring to how is the space on which data will be plotted. Because when we look at our paper, how is this data going to be represented when we print it out on paper? So that is what the coordinate is all about. I think the most one that is very common to us is the Cartesian coordinate system. But we also have the, the polar coordinate system. They have different type of coordinate system in which we'll still talk more 
about that. Then the last layer here we have the teams, the all known that I think, but in the book, uh, they, they did not discuss about the team in this chapter. We are not going to cover about the team, but when we want to, the, by next week, Monday, when we'll be talking about communication, because these are two new chapters that they, was just added to the book. So when we are discussing about communication, that is where we talk more about the team, we expand the team, because it's the non, it is not linked to the data, but it's help us to communicate to, to communicate better insights uh, from our data. So that is all for this. I don't know if there are any comments or any contribution before I move to the next uh, slide. No, but I think that was pretty clear. Okay, thank you. So, so here we are looking at aesthetic mapping. Just as I said earlier on, the aesthetic mapping is by we picking linking variables in which we can find in our data set into what the visual properties in the germ. So here we can say that we will be working with the MPG data set that is bundled with the GGPOT2 package and it contains 233 observations collected by the US Environmental Protection Agency. It has 233 rows and what 11 columns. So so this is just a glimpse uh, of the data set in which we'll be looking at uh, for this demo. We have the manufacturer of the car. We have the model of the car. We have the displacement. We have the year. We have the cylinder tribe. So these are all the data sets. So in the first example, in the first example, we have the GG function. So this GG function, the first argument that is always going in so the GG function is our data because we need to tell GG plot what is the data we are trying to use to create our visualization. If we pass in the data without specifying anything, we are just going to get just a gray background in our our studio plotting window. So we pass in the data here, then within the aesthetics, we say X, let displacement be mapped to the X axis. Then for the Y, which is highway, this will be mapped to the y-axis. Then we want to color this visualization by the class of the car. We want to color it by the class. Then in the plots that will be in the right, I still do the same thing. I have my data, I have my static x and y, but I use a different argument. I use a different mapping here. I use shape rather than color. I say shape should be equals to class. But when I say shape is equals to class, then for the geometry refers to what is the type of visualization I'm trying to create. Since I'm trying to create a, a scatter plot, so the geometry is going to be two points. But ggplot2 is going to is going to return some warning for me that the shape palette can deal with a maximum of six discrete values because more than six becomes difficult to discover. You can have seven. Consider since we have seven because in the in the class there are seven class of cars. If you look at the legend, we have seven class of car. So they say specify the shape. We can do this by using scale shape manual, whereby we can go and look for seven manual shape that will suit those that are said in that case we will not get this warning because we, because of that our studio dropped 762 rows were dropped because of this uh, shape argument. So when we look at the visualization, we can see the first plot, which is in the left, okay? And in that plot, we map displacement to X, we have highway uh, to the Y axis, we have color by the class, and we have geometry points, which is going to create uh, the scatter plot. But in the, in the right-hand side, is a similar plot, but the difference is that it, rather than we using uh, color, uh, mapping color to class, we are mapping shape to the class. And when we map shape, because we have seventh class of car, the seventh car does not have any symbol. You can see it in the legend because our studio by default, by default, the program has been programmed with six shape. 
you can, so when you have more than six shape, you consider using scale shape manual where you can specify uh, the six different shape, maybe the seven different shape that I have in my data set. I can go and look for the seven different shape that I can, that I can best use to present uh, my data. Okay, so that is that. So I say similar, we can also map class to size or alpha uh, aesthetic as well, because alpha is going to help us to control, I think, the transparency of the plot. So we can have the same plot. We can say less size equals to class. We are using the same geometry, which is going to be points. And in this case, the second plot on the right, we are using alpha equals to class. We are still using the same geometry. So, so when we do that, we can see uh, where we have, uh, we can see that SUV uh, has the biggest class of it is SUV. Uh, the smallest, we have the two-seater. We can see where the two-seater the live. Then the alpha here simply help us to reduce uh, the transparency, uh, reduce the transparency uh, in our visualization. So here, there are some instances where we want to create our visualization. We want to color all the points by setting color. In this example, I color all the points by blue. In that case, since there is nothing in the data set that is blue, okay? So I can go outside of the aesthetic mapping. So I go outside of the aesthetic mapping and I now specify color is equals to within string, then I pass it blue. So in that case, ggplot2 is going to work, color all the rows in the data set, all where we have all the points is going to color all the points to be a, give it a blue color. So here by default, just as I, as I was explaining on the shape, these are all the shape uh, variables. Uh, these are all the shape, unique shape in which R has. It has, a, R has 25 built in what shape by default. I have 25 uh, belt in shape. I think my audio is okay now. You, everybody can hear me. Or I am audible to all. Yeah, I can hear you. You're, you're a little bit quiet, but I can hear you quite clearly. Okay, okay. So I said, how are uh, 25 belt in shape that are identified by numbers? There are some being duplicates. For example, 0, 15, and 22 are all squares. You can see 0. 15, 22, they are all squares, but the squares, but some of them has a field color, while some of them does not have a field color. So these are all the 25 shapes which we have. Just like uh, where we have, where we are, I map shape is equals to what class. And I'll, I have seven uh, different uh, shape by default ggplot2 obeys six. So in order for us to overcome such issues is for me to say scale shape manual, then I can just come here and pick seven manual shape. Then I create a character vector and I pass in those seven uh, different shape. So I will automatically detect or just plot, just run the visualization and we see uh, that we can see that uh, we have seven different shape. In that case, there will be no uh, uh, warning in our visualization. I will not warn us that, hey, we are. We have gone beyond the six. So we can learn more about the aesthetic mapping by looking at these vignettes because I, I have added a link here uh, to the vignettes uh, where we can learn, uh, we, we can further learn about uh, the aesthetic mapping. I think in this section of aesthetic mapping, uh, there were some exercise. Let me scroll to those exercise. There were some exercise in the book. Okay, so the first exercise is that they say we should create a scatter plot of highway versus displacement, where the points are pink, filled in triangles. The points, they are what? Pink. They are filled in what? Triangles. So how do we do that? So already, can I share my art studio? Let me copy this. 
then maybe we'll come back to this now. Let me share another house studio. Good. So we have library. So we have GG plots. Data is MPG. Then we have aesthetics. They say where H W Y is in the H W Y is in the X. Y is this displacement where the points are big field in triangle plus geom underscore points then shape is equals to I think we have tri triangle but what do we have there okay so we can see that we have this but what is left? They said that the points, they should be what? Pink, okay? Then fill, they said fill in pink. It's equals to pink, okay? So when we run that, I was working on this uh, two example, but when I say color is equals to pink, it's going to color the entire points pink, okay? When I say color is equals to pink, we can see we have triangle, we have colored it to be pink. So let's go back to the, let's go back, where is it? Okay, so the second, why did the following code not result in plot with blue points? So we'll only do two examples, who can try? Who can who have an idea? Why does this code not result in because I said color is equal to what within straight blue, but it's now putting the legend here for color and it's coloring all the points red. Who can try? I think it's because the color is inside the aesthetic. So if you move color equals blue outside of the aesthetics. Correct, uh, at, correct, thank you very much. Uh, the issue is that if we look at the MPG data sets, there is no color where we can say blue. There is no column where we have color equals to blue in the MPG data sets. But now we are now within the aesthetics. We are now calling color equals to blue. So ggplot2 does not understand how to render this color equals to blue because there is nothing in the data set that is called color equals to blue. So what ggplot2 will do is that it will go across all the rows, okay? It's going to color all the points red. It's going to interpret it that way, color all the points red, and it's going to put a legend there to guide us. Anywhere we say color equals to blue, you know that anywhere you see color, Anyway, you see red dots, know that if we are having color equals to blue at that point. So that is how ggplot 2 is going to render it. It's going to put a guide legend there for us. But if we specify this outside of the aesthetic mapping, ggplot 2 is going to point, color all the points to be blue, just as we did earlier on in the, our previous example. So in this case, this, because this thing happened to me when I started learning ggplot 2 at times, I want to I want to map a certain aesthetics. That aesthetic is not in my data set. When I run the entire script, I will now see this. I will now ask myself, why is this here? Because if I go back to the data and look at the data, there is nothing like that in my data. So that is why GG, that is how ggplot2 understand how to render it. So it's going to render it anywhere we have this. Color equals to we have color equals to blue. Take it as a red point and put a guide legend there for us. 
So let's go back uh, to my notes. We just do two. Okay, I think, yeah, there's something I want to do. Okay, I want to use a new tool that is just uh, coming up. They say, what does the stroke aesthetics do? What shape does it work with? So let's copy this and ask chat GPT to respond to this question. Okay, so I, I think the chat GPT is just like a AI, artificial intelligence. The model has been trained using a large language model. So we can pass in, feed it any inputs, it's going to give us a response pass. So here, I want to ask chat GPT, what does the stroke aesthetic do? I want to ask chat GPT in GG plot two. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to submit. Come in. I'm going to submit this response to Chat GPT, and Chat GPT is going to respond to me. Okay, it's going to tell me, and the and I discovered it. I tried it this afternoon, and I discovered that the response I was getting from Chat GPT it gave me accurate response. I went back to the documentation. Uh, of ggplot2 and it was correct. It said a stroke aesthetic is a graphical parameter in ggplot2 that controls the line width of any lines or borders in a plot. This often allows you to make a graph look more visually, uh, more visually appealing. It makes us to make the graph to look uh, more visually appealing. So. Uh, so let's go back to the notes and look at uh, geometry. So like the geometry simply, as I said earlier on in my introduction, the geometry simply refers to uh, the type of visualization in which uh, we are trying to create. But here, in this case, we have two visualization in which I am showing you here. I have two visualization. And those, these two visualization, they are talk, they are referring to what? The same data sets because we map the same uh, the same uh, column to the X, the same column uh, to the Y. But the difference between these two visualization is that one is using, they are using the both charts, they refer, they use the same data, but they are using different geometry. The one on the left is using zoom points because we can see the points there. The one on the right is using zoom smooth. That is why we can see the smooth line there alongside with the confidence interval. But they are used to, to represent different information. They convey this different message from the same data. We can see we have displacement here. We also have displacement here. We have highway here. We have highway here. But the difference between these two is that this one is using uh, geom points. The geometry is geom points. Why this other one is using uh, geom spots? I don't know if there are any questions before we move to the next slide. So good. Okay, thank you. So yeah, for the geometry object also, for the geometry objects, we can also map shape to a certain variable. Here, yeah, I'm mapping shape to the drive. I'm, I'm using what? Tube spots. Okay. Why here? Yeah, I'm using line type to the drive. I'm also using tube smooths. So when we look, compare the two, uh, compare the two visualization, this one we use shape to the drive. This one we are using line that is going to put a guide there for us. You can see this line, you can put the line, but they, they are both using uh they are both using the same geometry. Okay, but we, we are mapping different variable. Is the difference between the two is just by looking at the aesthetic mapping. This one we are using line type, while this other one we are using shape. But they do represent the same information from the data. 
Why for this other example, we also have X displacement Y highway plus John Smoots. Why this other one we are using group by drive. We are using group to, to drive. And for this other one, we are using show the legend force. So when we say show anywhere we see in our visualization where we, we specify show the legend force, means that yes, we want ggplot2 to remove the legend. We want to turn off the legend for that particular visualization. We don't want to display the legend. So if I put show the legend force, it's going to remove uh, the legend for me. So these are the three different types of uh, visualization in which I have created because the last one is color. We color by drive. That is why we can see we have how many drive. We have one, two, three, four drive. We can see the four different color there. We can see the first one here. We are we are grouping by the drive and the 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 second visualization we group by drive. Why the third visualization, we did not specify anything. We just add our jump smooth. We map X, Y plus jump smooth. This one, we are, we are grouping them by the drive. Why this, we are coloring, we are using color. We color it by the drive. So it's going to give us uh, this visualization. If you look at this code, if you like look at this code, I was able to match all this figure in one page by using this pa ma c four four one one. This is going to make sure once I compile because it's an R markdown, it's going to render it uh, in one page because I'll still push all this to GitHub so you can you can just uh, clone that rep GitHub repository. You can get access to the updated notes. But if you have already cloned it already, you just need to use uh, the use this package. Just you call the PR match main function is going to update uh, uh, the notes for you. But if you have difficulty, you can just pick me at this Slack. I will put you through, walk you through on how to update the notes. So- On that, so, sorry on your phone. You say there are four different sorts of drive. I, I thought there were only three types of drive, front wheel, four wheel drive, and rear wheel okay. drive. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go back. Let's go back to our studio. Uh, where is the notes? Let's go back. So let's see STR. Take MPG. Uh, it's a character. MPG dollar sign drive. Let's go to factor. MPG. Let me see how many drive is there. STR, MPG, dollar sign. I think we have drive. There are three levels. Yes, it's true. There are three levels. Let's go back to the notes. There are three levels. Thank you for that. Let's see why. I think it's here. Yeah. X is displacement, Y is highway, displacement highway, okay. Supposed to smooth aesthetics, color is equals to DRV, it's supposed to be three levels. Mm -hmm. Well, we have it four levels here. We have three drive, but here we have in four drive. Because mm -hmm. if you check here, we have three drive. Yeah. Oh, we have in four drive. Is oh. that line of code? If you run it in R, does it produce those four lines? Let's go back to R and see this code. It's 
So let me just specify factor. Okay. Run and see. We got. It's still four. <laughs> let's see. Let me, let's show the legend. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's three level of. It's three level. <laughs> you can see. It's still yeah. it's three level. Because you can see the guide legend is showing us we have three, like it's three level. Let's it like this. It's three level of three draft. Yeah. You can see this color and this color, I think they are the same. This is the way we have an issue with. The well, I think driving. you've got a dark blue and a light blue, haven't you? Yes. No. You can see this line, they still, it still continue this way. <laughs> so this is where yeah. we are having issues, is with this. But when you compare it to the previous plots where you it produced the three lines. Yes, I understand, but the issue now is, look at the guide legend. Yeah. We have, R is placing three guide legend there to show that we have three drive. But if you now look at the color, one is light blue, one is dark blue, it's as if we are having two different uh, type of, as if we are having two different uh, drive arms, but actually we are having one. Mm. So we are going to stick with what we have with the legend, it's three drive, not four. Mm. It's three, three drive because the legend is correct. The legend yeah. identified that we have three drive, not four drive. So we are going to stick with what we have in the guide legend. This is showing us the right information, which is three drive and not four drive. Okay, so let me go back. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I was trying to explain this, that there are some instances is that just as I said earlier, the attribution part two is everything is built layer upon layer. So here, we are having the first layer where we map our data and we do, do our aesthetic mapping. We specify our geometry, which is points. Then here we specify another geometry, which is another point. But for this point, the data is MPG, still the same data we are using. But in that case, we are filtering for all the class that are two seater, okay? And the color for that, we want all the color for that uh, point should be red. Then we are still adding another zone point. We are still using the same data. We want to still filter all the class where we have two seater of cars. Then the shape, for the shape, we want to use circle open. Then the size, the size of the points, we said let it be three then the color should be red. So when we run, when we run, execute this line in our studio, we are going to get this. It's going to map this to the X, it's going to map this to the Y. So we are going to know that, oh, this is where we have all the two seater cars. This is where we have, we have one, two, three, four, five. These five, they belong to what? The two seater car. So it's very, very important the order in which we place our layer in ggplot2. So that is how we can render it. We can keep on adding several layers. So that is how uh, ggplot2, we, we can build it. It's just like we are building a house. So that is how ggplot2 works. We can just pick our paper, begin to draw our plots. We just create a mental model, then we now come to the program and start writing our script. Start seeing how we can solve uh, that problem uh, with ggplot2. In this case, uh, this is another example where we, where we are looking at uh, the distribution between highway using the histogram, using the density plots, and also using uh, the box plots. Because like here, we have data is MPG aesthetics, X is highway, 
geometry is histogram, the bin width is two. Then this, we are using density, but here we are using uh, the box plot. But when we look at uh, the distribution of this, it shows that here we, the, this, the data is primordial because we can see we have what, how many peak? We are having two peak in the data sets for the, for the histogram and also uh, for the density plots because we are having two peak is primordial. But when we look at the box plot shows us that we have two points that are far away, which we, we, we label those points uh, as, the, as our outliers. Those are outliers in the visualization. So by, but uh, the good discourse in the book by default ggplot2 provide more than 40 geometries in which we can use uh, in creating our visualization. But there are some times whereby there are some certain type of visualization in which we want to create and we might be thinking of a spe some specific set of uh, geometry in which we want to use uh, to create that visualization. So in that case, we need to start thinking of uh, ggplot2 extension packages. Because if you check here, I have a link here to the, uh, to the ggplot2 database gallery where we can get uh, the extension packages. And if you look at uh, the extension packages in ggplot2, which is here, we can see we have 120 registered extension available to explore. Let me put uh, the link. Let me put uh, the link in the chat. Come in so that you see it. Uh, let me put the link in the chat. The link. So you see it's the okay. So we have we have this this uh patchwork. Uh this is GG animate, GG start plots. Uh these are all the extension there. I must confess to you, I have not worked with almost all the June, all these packages. But there are sometimes maybe I want to create some. A specific visualization, I will start come here to read on the different packages to understand the documentation, how to use uh, the package because they all add different uh, extension features to ggplot2. But I always encourage that for you to, because there is a saying that uh, practice makes perfect. You need to put your hand in data. We need to keep on practicing this. Uh, take part in the Tidy Tuesday project that is always, if you go to Twitter, just hashtag Tidy Tuesday. I will encourage you to always uh, take part in the Tidy Tuesday uh, challenge. It's going to really help you uh, to, to improve uh, on your data visualization skill because like each week, they always post a specific data set where you can pick those data set you you apply all the techniques, all the skills that you have learned while reading the alpha data science, you wrangle the data sets, then you, you visualize it and you post your find your results on Twitter. People are going to comment. So if you go there, you see different, uh, different type of visualization each week, people, different approach on how to uh, present data. So you learn, you learn new thing each week. You, from there, you can learn how to use all these tools that I'm showing, all these extension packages, they go far beyond this. So learn how to perfect yourself on how to use uh, this, uh, these packages. So, so what is there? So for the exercise, should we do the exercise? Because I'm looking at my time, I think let's proceed. Let's proceed. So for the facets, so for the facet, it's just like uh, we want to split our plots into what small multiples, just as I said earlier. We have we want to split it into small multiple based on what certain categorical variables are that, that, that are being found in the data sets. So here we have in the data, we're still using the MPG that is from the, with the came with the ggplot2 package. So the X axis, we put the displacement, the Y, the I way, then the two points, then facet wrap. We want to wrap it 
uh, by cylinder fasten wrap, which is going to be based on row wise. So by all the cylinder. But when we have two categorical uh, variable, in which we want to facet our plot by, okay. In that case, we can we will make use of the what we call the facet grid. We can make use of the facet grid. So for us to really understand this, so let me copy this. I'll show this. Let go back to our studio. Go back to our studio. Paste this here. So this is facet uh facet grid. So when we run this, so when we run this, this is what we got. Okay. This is what we got. So by default, the, the, the default scales in which uh, Digiplot 2 use is fixed. It's using a fixed scale. But we can we can choose to set the scale for both the rows and the column. We can set it to a free scale whether we allow it to vary based on the variability in which the, uh, we can get from the data sets. But we can also change this facet grid to facet RAM. When we do this, this is how this same visualization is going to look like. Okay, it's going to show this four, 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 six, four, eight. It's the same visualization. They are conveying the same message, showing difference in because here, this is a, this four refers to what the drive. This other four refers to what cylinder. This other four is still drive four, cylinder six, drive four, cylinder eight. So it's still the same thing we are showing. We can also leave it as facet grid. It's still the same graph. So it's for us to best know the best approach in which we can use uh, in showing, in presenting our own data. For me, I prefer when you have two categorical variables, I always use uh, the facet grids to avoid confusion, to make it clear for my viewers when they are reading the plot, to make it easy for them to follow along with me. Okay, so let me go back now to the notes. So just that, okay, this is, uh, okay, this is the facet grid, okay. So for the statistical transformation, just as I said earlier in the introduction, that each job in which we are creating uh, with ggplot2, they all have a default statistics. Because like this is a bar chart, the default statistics is always a count. That is why we are seeing counts in the y-axis, plotting counts in the y-axis, then because we only map x-axis to cuts. So this is x-axis, these are the cuts, we map it to the x-axis, so it's going to pick the count. So for each cut, it's going to get the count. So this is what ggplot2 does. This is the data set, okay? We are mapping cuts. This is the cut. Fair, the number of counts for fair is 1,610. For good is 4,008. So it's going to do it this way. The proportion is just like one. So it's going to pick cuts and place it in the X axis. It's got, then alongside the Y axis, it's going to be plots the counts in the Y axis. So that is what is going on behind the scale. But if you have if you already have, okay, I think uh, Olukin may have a question. Uh, yeah, Mr. Femi, I want to ask a question as you know this. When you were specifying S score to cut, if I'm right, sorry, why is called to cut? Why didn't we specify that? Why is why is it called to why is called to count? S score to cut? Why not like that? We were doing right from the beginning. No, it will not work like that. Okay. You can just put so that there is background noise there. No problem. Thank you. So what we did, I mean, is that we have cuts. Okay, a variable in the MPG data set called cuts. So I pick that variable and I place in the text axis. If you look at here, I pick that. This is diamonds. I have a value called cuts. I put that cuts in the x axis. I map it to the x axis. Then I, the geometry, I using Jumba. Just like for Jumba, the default statistics for Jumba is stats counts. 
So it's using counts. It's going to count all the proportion for each cut. It's going to count, make, make sure you do all the counts. Like for fair, it's going to count the total number of fair. For good, it's going to count uh, the total number of good, very good, premium, and also ideal. It's going to get all those counts. Those are what example, this is, this is just the example I'm trying to do here. Okay, so fair is this, good is this. So ggplot2, you don't need to say why should be equals to count. So once it's passing x, okay, once you're passing the x, okay, you just need to say jump bar. So once you use jump bar, it's going to plot the counts in the y-axis. But for me to answer your question, if I go back to the notes, there is an example I want to use to answer that question so that it will be clear. If I go back to the notes, there is one example in which they did. Oh, there is one example. There is one example. There is one example. Yeah, this is it. So I will copy this. Okay, this case we have frequency, we also have the cuts. So let me go back to answer that or looking less uh, question, go back to our studio. Okay, then open my script, paste it here. So run this, ah, uh, what is this? So I need to load library, table. Okay, so we run that. We can view this in the house studio. Okay, we can all see that, that we are having cuts and we are having the frequency. The frequency, that is the count. Okay, in this case, we are having cuts and also the count. And we want to visualize this using the same approach. Okay, so just as he asks, so what I'll do there, I'll say ggplot. So data is cut, cut frequency, then aesthetics, X, I'll put cut, Y, I'll put frequency, okay, plus geom underscore bar. So when I'm using geom bar, I need to put the start, I need to override the start because I'm providing two arguments. So I says identity, okay? Is it clear? So alternatively, I can solve this same problem this way. There are different way of solving this same issue. I remove this and I put call here, to call and I'll get uh, the same result. Can we proceed? Hello? Proceed. You can proceed. And okay, so, so let me go back to the notes. Uh, so that is that. I think I've explained this. Uh, what again? Okay. Let me explain the after start because this is a new function because it always confusing at the beginning when you start using this function. There are some certain instances whereby you want to delay a certain aesthetic mapping till after the statistical transformation in the data set has been carried out. So after carrying out the statistical transformation, do this. So in this case, we are mapping X to the, all the cuts to the X axis. But this Y we are using after underscore stats then we are passing what the prop. So after the statistical transformation has been carried out by ggplot2, then map all the counts, the proportion to the y-axis. Then we are using this group argument equals to one, then we are using jumba. So that is the case. In this case, it's going to map all the proportion. That is from 0, 0.0 to around 0. 0.4, okay? It's going to map all the proportion uh, in the y-axis. So we are using after stats. In that case, there is after stats, 
There is also after scale. There is after underscore start function. There is also another one called the after underscore scale function. So that one after underscore scale will be after after the data has been uh, after the data has been scaled. Then do this other one for me. After scaling the data, then do this. So that is done for after starts. Uh, there are some instances where I want to move out. There is a background noise. I don't know. Someone might is or I think it's Olukunle. So there's some certain instances whereby we want to use a certain uh, statistical transformation, which is like the the stats underscore summary function. It's very it's a very important function because when I start learning ggplot two, I always do all my data wrangling using dplyr to do all my statistical transformation. But these days, I do everything directly on my visualization using this new function, the stats underscore summary function. So within this ggplot, we are passing in the data, which is a diamond data set we are working with. Then we are adding a new layer, which is a start summary. Then aesthetics, we map it X to cut, Y to depth. Then the function from the minimum, which is the minimum, which will be the minimum value that can be found from the diamond data set from the maximum, which will be the maximum value, then the function want to pass is the median, but we can also specify the mean. We can also specify means underscore standard error, but in this case, we are using the median. And if you, in this case, the default statistics uh, for start summary, I think is to a point range. So it's not just going to give us uh, the point range. So these dots represent uh, the median value. So it's going to give us the range, the minimum and the maximum value that can based on what we can see uh, from the data sets. Just as I said here, ggplot will provide more than 20 stats for you to use. Each stat is a function, so you can get help in the user way using question mark stats bin. It's going to give you the help documentation for that uh, specific uh, function in which uh, we are which we are working with. Okay, in this case, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the position adjustments, how to adjust our visualization because we are, uh, the main idea of this is how to improve our data visualization skills. So we are still using the same example. Here we are using color is equals to cuts because when we, and we are using Jumba, we are also using fill is equals to cuts. And we are also still using uh, Jumba. We are still using the mapping the same variable in the x axis. So when we say color is equals to what? Cut. So color means we are coloring the border of the bar plots. We want to color the borders of the bar plots uh, by the cut variable. But when we say fill is equals to cut, we are filling each bar by the cut variable, which is what we can see here. We are filling each of the bars uh, by the cut variable, but there are some instances whereby we can map fill to a different to a different color. Because here we are having X is called fill is equals to clarity plus jump bar. In that case, ggplot2 will automatically stack those bars for you. It will stack those bars for you, but it's, it will automatically stack those bars. So, but for you to overcome this, maybe you want those bars to be placed side by side, and uh, so you can say you can you can just say position is equals to what dodge is going to place those bar side by side for you, or we can say position is equals to what field. In that case, it's going to plot uh, based on the proportions uh, that can be found in the data sets. But in this case, it always is always very difficult for us to read such visualization becomes very difficult for us to reach source because the points are so stuck on top of each other, we cannot, it, it becomes dif difficult to view those uh, proportions. So for us to overcome that, we normally, we normally set the alpha, which, which help us to what? Controls uh, the transparency of the plots. Because when we set the alpha is equals to one over five, 
we can see we further improve. Uh, we can easily see those stack bars. We can see them clearly. Um, or we can also sell the field is equals to NA. When we set the field, is equals to NA, just like the plot here, we can see we are the field. There is nothing there. We can see each of those stack bar clearly. It becomes very easy for us uh, to read it. But uh, they also discuss in the book that how do we, are, how do we overcome the problem of what over plotting? Because there are some time where we are, we are doing our visualization, our points, they are so cluttered on top of each other. Okay, those points are so cluttered upon each other, which has become very easy, difficult for us to read the plots. So in that case, we can pass in a new argument here between our zoom points, which is position is equals to what jitter is going to what spread those points out for us. It's going to spread those points out for us, and it makes it very easy for us to read those plots and for us to get, derive more insights uh, from uh, on our data visualization. I don't know if there are any comments now before we move to the next part. Any comments, any contribution about uh, no, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, no problem. So I move to oh coordinate system. So coordinate system is they are very very important uh, in our data visualization because uh, the the coordinate is is the most and they do explain the book that this is the most complicated part of ggplot2 because the default coordinate system. In ggplot2 is a Cartesian coordinate system. But we can change from the Cartesian coordinate system to the code fix. In code fix, we, are, we can fix the, both the x and the y limits. They will be in a fixed coordinate system. And this is very similar to what we call the code equal. We can also, within the coordinate system, we can also use this other one, which is a code flip, okay? This is very useful. Maybe the text in the exercise become very difficult uh, for our user readers to read that text. We can flip the X, flip it to the Y. We can just say code flip is gonna take X, place it in Y, take Y, place it in X, so that it will be easy for people to read uh, the plot. But when we are working with maybe the to spatial analysis, you know, we normally use the code map or the code quick map, which is very useful uh, when we are working with uh, uh, spatial GIS, that is to spatial analysis. Uh, we also have uh, the code polar, because if you change, if you just add code polar to a Cartesian coordinate system, it just gives you something like a pie chart. It, it transforms it automatically into Pie charts. So at this one, we have the theta, we have the stats, we have the direction. There are some certain arguments in which we can further specify to it. And we also have the code trans. Code trans, they are also very useful. Maybe we want to transform uh, a certain coordinate system. Maybe we want to log transform this. We can use the code trans. It's very useful. We can use it in transforming those coordinate systems. But we also, within the scales argument, we can also use it uh, to transform our our coordinates system. So, but they do explain in the book that they do not cover more about geospatial analysis. That if 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 we are interested in learning more about uh, geospatial analysis, I put a link in the chat to the ggplot2 book that cover more in depth about uh, geospatial analysis uh, using R. I think there, also, there is also the, the Geo Computation Book in R, which is a very good book if you want to learn about uh, geospatial analysis uh, using the R program uh, language. So in this example, from the map data, they are getting uh, the, the, this, this shape file, they are assigning it to this object. So they use ggplot2, they pass in the data, then the statics x is the longitude, y is the latitude, group is equals to what group plus uh, geopolygon. Then fill 
is white because they want to fit, fill each polygon by white shape. Then color is equals to black. So that is the border of the polygon will be black. So in this other example, it's still the same thing. But what they, are, they did here, they just add the code quick map. You can see the look of these plots, they are different. Okay, the look of the plots, they are different. This one is a Cartesian coordinate system. This one is another coordinate system, which is a called quick map. You can see the look, they are, they are different. So this one, this example here, we have already seen how to create a bar chart. This is a bar chart. Okay, this is for the bar chart. So we can say bar charts, our bar chart that we created with this code plus code flip to flip the coordinate system, just as I explained. It's going to flip X to Y, Y to, to X. We also have our bar chart here plus code polar. We can see that we, we give us a pie chart. We can just pick a bar chart, just say plus code polar is going to transform uh, the coordinate system into another uh, into another uh, coordinate system. So, so the summary of what we learned uh, so far today in this chapter, we learn about uh, the layered grammar of graphics, starting with aesthetics, uh, geometries to build a simple plot. We use facet for splitting the plot into what small multiples because they are very useful because it, it helps us overcome the problem of overplotting. We also look at, we use how to, to use statistics for understanding how jobs are calculated. Because as I said earlier, these geometries, they always have a default statistics, but we can over, always override those statistics if you want to. We also learn how to use position adjustment uh, for controlling the fine details of position when jobs might otherwise overlap. We also learn how coordinate system allow us to fundamentally change what X and Y mean. One layer we have not yet touched is, is, is the team because the team will help us to improve how they look, the appearance of the plots. And when we present it to our user audience, uh, it becomes very informative, which we'll be covering that next week, Monday, when I will be talking about the communication chapter of the book, because this is a, it's a new chapter that is just added to this book. And they said two very useful resources for getting an overview of the of the complete ggplot2 functionality at the ggplot2 cheat sheet, which you can find at the ggplot2 package website. So when we look at the cheat sheets here, you can see this is a ggplot2 cheat sheet. It contains almost all the functions. So let me put that in the chat. Let me put the link also in the chat. Put the link in the chat. Okay, I think uh, that is all that next is just learning more. We can have R for data science. We can join the Slack, R, R graph gallery, the graph section of the R cookbook. It's also a very good, it's also a very good book on data visualization. I think they will, will be starting a new course in February. A new course on this book will be coming up in February. So I will encourage all to join that course. I think if you want to really learn more uh, about uh, data visualization, I think that is all I got. The next is just the video recording for the past uh, course. I don't know if there are any questions, so I'll be very happy to take questions. Um, I did have one question. I, I did look through some of the stuff um, in this chapter before, and on one of the exercises, um, I struggled a bit. Okay, let's see. Um, I think it was question. Well, it's what I had is 11.5.1. It's talking about the links between stats and geomes, and it asks you to produce. Five. What does. Okay, which other one? Is it question one? Um, yes, that's the one. And in the yeah. end, I'll just stick into chat. Okay. What I I get that what do does that to make it work? I say, I say, what does the call do? How is it? No, no, question from... one. Question one. Okay, question one. What is the default jump associated with start summary? Okay. 
the default geometry that is associated with that summary, I think is point rich. Let me see. Mm, yeah, I, I got that bit. And then when you have to rewrite it, the okay. stats don't seem to work. So I had to map. How map could you rewrite the previous plot? The max. If you look in chat, I've just posted the solution okay. I had to try and produce that plot. But it felt it it felt like I ought to be able to okay. put in the functions. Yes. Let me copy it and go back to our studio. Is it here? Oh, oh, oh. So it's not actually using the stat at all because the stat didn't seem to work. So we run to the They say we should use your point range. Yeah, so I've, I've got G and point range there. Aesthetics, axis cuts. We have a big column, column. Okay, Y. That's a medium. Okay, Y okay, is Y. Y minimum. It's taking time. It's a bit slow. I mean, it works, but I've basically, I've had to manually calculate the stats. Okay, I've not okay. been able to, you know, I've not been able to use the stat um, that's associated with point range to calculate the median, the max and the minimum. I've had to do it using, you know, adding columns. Okay. So uh, alternatively, I can just say, I think we have diamonds. It works. That is the result. And then GG plus bar plus start plus for summary. Then aesthetics. X. X is cut. I think Y. Why is X? Joe, is what they use points, points, range. Okay. Function is medium. We are using the medium. Yep. John call points range. I find John. Okay, the default is points range already. Hmm. Okay, I'm missing by John Sedman. So I think geo point range seems to default to oh, that identity rather than yes that um on dot maximum is maximum uh, this is okay we can override that zoom. Since the default is point range, we can say let's use points. Have you seen? I can override it to a different, since 
in the documentation. Ah, sorry. So, since in the documentation, we have starts on the score summary. If you look at the default starts, uh, the GEOM is point range. But then if you look at GM point range, so the default I made a mistake um, then if you look at, I made a mistake earlier on position is identity. The position is identity, yes. That means don't do anything. Pick everything from the data you are feeding in. Okay? Yeah. Start summary, geom point range, position is identity. But we can set, we can override the position where we run this, it's going to give us this. You have seen it. So when I do this, I put geom point range, it's going to plot this. But if you remove this and say geom, should be points. It's going to just point, plot yep. the point there. And we can put color of the points to be equals to maybe red. Okay? Yep. It's going to make sure all those points, they are going to be red. So we can say points range, color is red. So the color of the dots is going to be red. But when you say color, you specify another categorical variable, it's going to put the legend for you. So if I say color it by the cut, color is by the cut. We can't see it because why? Because uh, if I for me this to work, I need to come back to my aesthetic mapping and put it here. Color is equals to cut, so that it will know where uh, to pick it. I think you don't want the quotes around cuts there, do you? It's... Yes, 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 sorry. So it will know that, okay, color is equals to cut, so it's a not big fair, not big this, we can now see that everything is working fine for us. I don't know if I'm able to answer your question. Um, well, I think that it kind of goes quite a long way to it, but the question, I. In the exercises, it was saying to use geom point range to reproduce that plot. Okay, but John. I think you have hey, your solution. To me, it looked like geom point range. Should your solution it is your solution. What? It, it works, but it kind of doesn't. It's not because I thought the geom should also link to the stat. Yes, yes. So yes. GM point range should work with stat summary. Uh, but I can't make it work with stat summary, so I've had to manually calculate those summary stats. No, stat summary, the default job is point range. Yeah. That is what I did. Well, if you are using stat summary, the default geometry is always point range. It yeah. has been set at default. But for you to override that, you need to specify. You need to specify your own geometry before it will understand. Okay, do yeah. it this way. Okay, so maybe okay. if there are no time because we are far spent our time, this is 6.29. If you go, let me go back a uh, year. Uh, in case you want to present anything, but in case you are not, I will still come back next week to to discuss that's in the uh, the communication or we'll discuss about the communication but in case anybody is willing to present the chapter you can just go up there and sign up for it yet yeah just put your name there because that is the main uh goal of the class is for everybody to come together as a group and learn uh, from each other as a group so maybe if you are willing to present any chapter you can just sign up for it but if there is nobody to present, there is no issue, I will come back uh, next week Monday to present the chapter. So in case there are no questions, I thank you once again for your time. Thank so you. we'll see, we'll see next week.
I hope everybody will join, be able to join by next week. Christine, Dolly, and the rest, and uh, we are expecting they will join us uh, by next week. See you next week. Bye. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.